Hey guys, so time to close out chapter 6 with our take on defective matrices. Um, defective matrices, I think they were in the title of a couple of my other videos and I didn't mention them at all because uh, they're really only treated in this last section. And I believe this to be probably one of the hardest things to grasp about this course just because uh, there's different kind of multiplicities and you have to use this big theorem. Um, a lot of matrix and chapter 6 really concepts come together uh, and it can be a little confusing um, and so I'm I'm gonna do my best to just kinda give like a thorough treatment on it I know for a lot of people this is their hardest section but uh, nonetheless after this you're done with uh, linear systems for now or are you we'll see later in nonlinear dynamics uh, what I mean but anyway defective what does it mean so a defective matrix means it has a eigenvalue in which its geometric multiplicity let's call it g is less than its algebraic multiplicity n so what this really means is there's fewer than m linearly independent eigenvectors associated with said defective eigenvalue so it's kind of like the w vector from 2 by 2 case except now we have to deal with this theorem because we're dealing with higher order systems and so the theorem is as follows if we have some a n by n and it has a, an eigenvalue with algebraic multiplicity m and we let v1 all the way to vm be linearly independent solutions of a minus lambda i to the m which means you just multiply that matrix onto each other as many times as its algebraic multiplicity and then uh, there's solutions of when that final matrix multiplied by some vector is equal to zero then you can form these xk vectors which are given as follows just e lambda t times your vk so your first x1 vector would only deal with the v1 vector and it kind of follows from the um, well not kind of it does follow from the infinite series definition of uh, e to the ta and so it's given as follows and then here uh, i probably should have been a little bit more careful this k is not part of the the um, this formula up here. This is I'm just telling you that k goes from one to m, and um, these x k's are linearly independent solutions of the matrix that you're trying to solve, or this is something you're trying to solve. X prime is equal to a x. Um, practice this a lot. It it's not something that I can just show you an example and you'll be fine with. Uh, I don't claim that about any of my videos really, uh, but the way that you use this video should be to kind of guide you in how you at attack these problems. Um, and so let's go ahead and go into the next example to see what the method is. So this looks pretty standard, it's just an IVP, and I tell you you use the matrix exponential in order to solve it. So matrix exponential is made up of the fundamental matrix solution, right? So we're going to have to find our lambdas and eigenvalues anyway. So I'm going to tell you again that the lambda here is, and it should be repeating, right, for this section, it is minus 3 multiplicity 2, so repeated. Okay? So now let's do a plus 3i squared, right? Because that's what it told me to do with the m multiplicity and so this will become the matrix becomes 4 4 minus 4 minus 4 multiplied by that again 4 minus 4 4 minus 4 that was crazy now the 4 is connected and I made like 8 of them cool anyway this matrix becomes 0 0 0 0 and for the 2 by 2 case this is how you know it's defective so from here you can see the two linearly independent vectors that come to mind that are linearly independent to this right here are v1 is equal to 1 0 and then v2 is equal to 0 1 right okay so from there we just apply the theorem our x1 therefore is going to be e to lambda t so e minus 3 t times our vk which is 1 0 and then plus t 
t times a minus lambda i, which was again this 4 minus 4, 4 minus 4, times again our vk, 1, 0. And then similarly our x2 is essentially the same thing, e minus 3t times uh, 0, 1, plus t, 4, 4, minus 4, minus 4, 0, 1. Great. Uh, these are pretty easy matrix multiplications, but I'll, I'll solve them out for you anyway. So x1 in this case is then e minus 3t. 1 plus 4t, 4t. And similarly, x2 is e minus 3t minus 4t, 1 minus 4t. Great. Okay, so from here we can now construct our fundamental matrix solution, right? We just put these uh, in a column, right? So, therefore, our fundamental matrix solution, x of t, is equal to e minus 3t, because it's common to both. And so, here, let me scroll up a little so you can see it. So that top component is 1 plus 4t, right? So then over here, it's 1 plus 4t. Down here is 4t minus 4t, 1 minus 4t, right? Okay, and I said to solve by matrix exponential. So we need to find our matrix exponential. So let's find what x of 0 is. And this is something important that I uh, I wanted to mention. So I chose this example to show you. When I put in 0 into this e minus 3t, that's just going to give me 1. So it's whatever's on the inside. 1 plus 4 times 0 is 1. This 4 times 0 is 0. Over here is going to be 0. Over here is 1. So our x of 0 by itself is equal to the identity, which Therefore, this means that our fundamental matrix solution is also its own matrix exponential, which is a good save. Like it's something that, uh, therefore, you you saved yourself a matrix uh, matrix multiplication, right? So, and then remember from before uh, the matrix exponential, you can use it to you can just pose it and then multiply by your initial condition to get your final answer, right? Because that's what we did in the uh, y prime is equal to ay in the first order case. At the end of the day, it's just y is equal to y0 e to the at. Same thing here. So the solution then becomes e minus 3t. So it's our x of t, which is also our e to the ta. 1 plus 4t, 4t, minus 4t, 1 minus 4t, and then our initial condition was 7, 1. And then you can write it like this. This is pretty succinct. Um, but if you want to write it out, that's also fine. Which is equal to e minus 3t times 7 plus 24t, 1 plus 24t. And we can check that that's right because when we plug in 0, uh, you're going to get 7, 1, which was our initial condition, which is what we wanted. So that's kind of how you employ uh, stuff like this. So from here on out, whenever you see a matrix that has a repeated eigenvalue, test for defectiveness. And if it is defective, as was up here, of being all zero for two by two case. For three by three, um, just two of the rows can be zero, and that could mean it's defective. Uh, pay close attention to how the theorem lists it and how the problems in the book are. But yeah, just be on the lookout now that we have covered defective matrices. So, awesome. So, up next is chapter 7, which is nonlinear dynamics. And it's actually a topic that's pretty rich, pretty interesting. Um, there's a lot to it. Uh, the book itself, I think, tries to get a little too mathematically rigorous, I would say, uh, for, you know, sophomore level course here at Georgia Tech. Um, so... When I tell you that if you want to learn more about this uh, about nonlinear dynamics, I recommend you take 4541 or 4542. 
Uh, take my word for it, because I took those courses, and they really expanded upon Chapter 7. That's basically what those courses were. It's just a very thorough treatment of Chapter 7 stuff. So I'm going to give you what is appropriate for 2552 and not exactly what the book is. So uh, stay tuned for that.